Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. As a mystic and artist, I will share a few personal thoughts on art and its relationship to spirituality. My hope is to inspire us to look at art a little differently and to use our artistic talents with greater focus. Is there anything that can transform our senses faster than art can? Just a few notes. And we are drawn into another mood, another world, another reality. Or just a few paragraphs of a good book make us forget our daily worries. And paintings can have the same effect. It is no wonder that most popular visual art are images of beauty, loveliness, skies, flowers and so on. These are works that we feel drawn to because they are mostly hopeful, if not to say uplifting. It is a powerful antidote to all the bitterness, the sadness and the hopelessness that many feel in their daily lives. Therefore, more than ever, people are flocking to museums in ever-larging numbers to nourish their soul and be embraced by art. Beautiful art has always been an effective medicine to bring us back into harmony. For celebrated artists like Matisse, this was their main focus. He hoped that his art of balance and purity would have an appeasing influence, like a mental soother, something like a good armchair in which to rest from physical fatigue. And Pablo Picasso said it more precisely, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Sometimes we are attracted to art because it gives us what we feel is missing in our own life. For instance, if we feel hectic, we may want to listen to serene music or look at images of calmness and tranquility. Art brings us back to our inner strength and balance that we have temporarily lost touch with. But art can also help us to see and appreciate the world anew, to look again at a sunset, to appreciate the movement of light, to listen anew to the sounds of nature, to discover the exotic and the strange and the unexpected. It broadens our horizon as it draws us into details of life and shows us the richness of creation in paintings, music, literature, dance, architecture and many, many other artistic ways of expression. For some, art is also a means to make us feel less lonely. It can reconnect us with divinity, something larger than ourselves. It can reawaken our compassion for others and for ourselves. As Vincent van Gogh said, art is to console those who are broken by life. The actual artistic creative process varies from artist to artist, but let us reflect on the spiritual aspect of the artist's creativity. We know that the universe is nothing but a constant sending and receiving of energy vibrations or frequencies. In other words, we humans are also nothing but vibrational entities that constantly send out our individual vibrations through our thoughts, words and actions. This applies even more so to any artist. She does this very consciously as she creates, meaning projects, a piece of art into the world. May it be a piece of music, a painting, a dance or anything else. The question is, from which part of her being is she creating? What is the source of her creativity and inspiration? Is it from her own true essence, which some call our higher self, which is love, harmony and joy? The divine inner wellspring of inspiration? If so, her art will reflect and vibrate that beauty in many ways into the world. Mozart is a typical example here, who apparently channeled his divine music without ever making a single mistake or correction as he wrote down his compositions. In her creative process, the artist beholds and feels that beauty, that harmony, that balance, and then seeks to duplicate it in her own way via her individual expression. Any creative act is a recombination of existing bits of universal intelligence, be they be in the form of words, notes, rhythms, colors, shapes, and so on. Possible combinations are infinite, and so is creation. As she is expressing and sending these aspects out of her in her art, they may then stimulate the same noble qualities in those who come into contact with her work. 
But other artists prefer not to work with this particular source of inspiration. These artists draw the source of their inspiration from their subconscious. Not their higher self, but their personality, their ego, their unquestioned and often troubled mind. They are comfortable to connect more easily with their own personal unresolved issues or their anxieties or struggles which the world around them reflects back to them. As we know, the outer world is always a reflection, like a mirror, of what goes on within us. I have explained that in greater detail in my video The Law of Projection. This form of artistic expression is a powerful tool for self-discovery. It is basically art therapy where we can learn what it is that we have not yet overcome, loved, forgiven, or questioned and resolved. It's more like an honest diary entry that tells us what goes on within us in our life. Some artists are very attached to their issues and feel that they have to share their inner hardship and struggles with everyone else. A classic example is the artist Louise Bourgeois, who discovered as a young child that her father had an affair with her governess. She felt so betrayed that she kept expressing her anger in her work for the rest of her long creative life. The motivation for the work is a negative reaction against her. Uh, it shows that it is really the anger that makes me work. She turned me into a wild beast, right? In contrast, the artist Niki de St. Fall took a very different route. Initially, she also expressed her difficult childhood in very violent and aggressive art, which included shootings and destruction. But she eventually transcended her personal issues and began to populate the world with her famous delightful nanas and colorful creatures that enchant millions every day. Isn't it interesting that most famous art that has endured and attracted generations after generations is not an expression of unresolved personal issues of the artists? I already mentioned Mozart. Did he ever convey in his compositions the misery and disappointments he was going through as he grew older? Did Van Gogh complain in his vibrant paintings that nobody wanted to buy them? Certainly not. Did grumpy Beethoven lamented in his symphonies that he was stone deaf? The problem with all our unresolved emotional issues is that we are constantly sending these vibrations into the world. And there can be attractive entry ports for negative astral entities who resonate with these issues and can manipulate and even dominate the creative process of an artist to gain energy influence and control. We see their malicious expression in many examples of violent and destructive art like some video games and extreme musical expressions that enforces harmful emotions and actions in the musicians and the audience. For an artist it is usually easy to determine from which level we are working by the way we feel. If we open to our higher self and let the divine creative energy and inspirations flow through us, we usually feel more invigorated, energized during and after our creative process, in spite of all the temporary artistic challenges that we may encounter. The result is often that we can't wait to return to the studio and make more art. But when we only work from our ego and our own unresolved issues and unquestioned mind, The artist very often feels tired, drained, depleted and mentally exhausted. In some cases, it can even cause depressions or burnout. And if a cup of coffee doesn't help, some artists may even reach for alcohol or drugs to regain their depleted energy. And this is exactly what these guys here want us to do. Sadly, the list of artists whose inner struggle caused their own early death is long. It always comes back to the law of cause and effect. Absolutely anything that we send out and is not love intended or love based will always have karmic consequences for the sender to wake us up. Yes, it also includes the art that we produce. Anything that is unloving or from our ego, like from these lower levels, will inadvertently come back to us as karma until we question it and love it. So much of today's art is shock value for an easily bored art community with the fragile egos and bloated vanity of collectors. I'm always thinking of the poignant words by the writer Tom Wolfe. Contemporary art would be considered a ludicrous practical joke if otherwise bright people hadn't elevated it 
to a higher plane, upon which a lot of money changes hands. Can we now see that the spiritual perspective of art differs vastly from the purely intellectual interpretation of art? It is my understanding that as we, as a society, advance spiritually, our art will serve exclusively for the glorification of the creator and creation in as much as the human expression is able to do it. It is a celebration of the all-unity, a symphony of harmony, balance and beauty, or as the painter, poet and printmaker William Blake wrote some 200 years ago, the artist's business is to transcend earth things and reveal the glories beyond. If the soul of the observer is lifted to such high vibration as to be closer to his own divine state and closer to God, then the work of art has achieved its aim. A typical example is music. It is a vehicle to loosen up the connection between the external frame and the body of the soul. This results in a feeling of floating, freeing oneself of material bonds. Art can remind us that we are eternal and divine light beings beyond space and time.